Hello, everyone. I am Tarek, the CEO of Racket and Mobile and the CEO of Racket and Symphony. Today, I want to give you a story, a story of transformation, a story that has a significant impact in technology disruption, one that we have enabled and built in Japan. But I also think the story starts with asking a simple question. Is connectivity a human right? If we look at this important topic and the concepts around connectivity, we all realize what that meant in terms of physical interaction and our ability to communicate over uh, wired and wireless communication. And with various challenges that we have faced, especially with the recent pandemic and COVID coming upon us, we all had to isolate at the houses. Almost all physical connections have disappeared. And can you imagine had we not had the digital tools to communicate and connect, what could have happened? Connectivity has really transformed every aspect of our life. And the ability to talk, communicate, and interact became vital to our survivability. But with that being said, I still ask a question that I pondered with myself and my team. With all the advances that we have done in our society, with all the achievements that we have accomplished, why do we still have three billion people in this world today that have no basics of connectivity? They are offline. They, have, they did not enjoy the privileges and the advantages of being connected and being part of a worldwide community. And furthermore, they got excluded from seeing the benefits that the internet could bring to them every day. So I answered that question, and I will tell you, I do believe that connectivity is a human right. I am passionate about this topic because I think we could do better in terms of providing connectivity infrastructure to the masses. The problem statement that we try to solve is why 3 billion people in this world don't have the basics of connectivity. Is I believe fundamentally building mobile infrastructure and building networks is complex. This is an area that I am very passionate about. I've been doing this business since 1981, since the first invention of the first 1G network. And I really love this space. I have been privileged to build mobile infrastructure across the world, starting from the United States, going to India, to Japan, and Europe. I had the opportunity to observe how mobile infrastructure are built, architected, engineered, and operated. And let me share with you some of my discoveries. First of all, the complexity of building this architecture revolves around the implementation of proprietary hardware. The essence of software almost non-existent. And as I was presented with the opportunity to build a new platform infrastructure in Japan, I said, if I had that opportunity again, I want to reimagine how mobile infrastructure is built. Build it on the essence of software, build an essence of cloud, and a very software-centric architecture, and implement the world first decentralized communication as a platform. Reimagining proprietary infrastructure into a more modern IT-like infrastructure. This is what we call democratization of connectivity. And in basic three elements, what does this really mean? One, a network that is completely built on a cloud-native architecture, a network that's containerized. Intelligence is embedded into its DNA. It's able to heal itself, it's able to organize itself, and it is a completely software-centric approach. Now, I want to share really good news with you. This is no longer a hypothesis that sits in a PowerPoint presentation. Change is happening now and we have launched this in a record speed in Japan. We could have chose and built an infrastructure the likes of many that exist across the world. And as we are excited about Web 3.0 technologies and what could bring, but please do remember Web 3.0 does require infrastructure to run and deliver data and services to consumer and enterprises. Within Racket and Mobile Japan, we have reimagined fundamental architecture to how networks are built, engineered, and in a record time, two years, we build the world first cloud native architecture now launched serving 
97% of Japan population. So while that excites me quite a bit about the technology aspect, there is other aspect that I got extremely thrilled about. What was the impact to launching such an architecture in Japan? The consumer price index almost reduced by 40%. Imagine the 40% reduction on your rate or monthly plan by simplification of this architecture, driving costs and economics out of it, made me believe that the answer for the question I started my presentation on is possible for us to lower the cost burdens, to continue to drive uh, cost optimization out of this network. And I believe optimistically that building connectivity platform, not just for the Japan, for the rest of the world, could help us address this critical fundamental issue to bring three billion people and let us bring them online because that is really to me what a fundamental transformation on technology that we could do, link it with society transformation out of a very critical area. So I'm very, very optimistic about the future and thank you very much.